All right, guys, we're back again with another video today. And this one took me a little bit to make. I was a little bit confused while doing it. I had to do a little bit more work. But yeah, we're going to be comparing Jin C's uh, best weapon to Jian's best weapon. We want to see how good it is on Jian. We're going to see how good it is on Kalcharo. Also, like, left Jin C versus Jin, the we Jian's weapon on Jin C in this video as well. So you guys can see what that looks like if you didn't catch it in any of the previous videos. And with it all being said, if you guys like the video, like the video, drop a comment down below, subscribe if you want to see more, and if you want to ask any questions or anything like that, and you can't get me in the comments, uh, feel free to join the Discord. I usually try to respond to all comments, obviously, I, I try my best to do it, but obviously I'm not going to be able to get to all of them. So with that being said, let's get right into the video. As you can see, this is like all the important stats for the weapons that you're going to want to see on screen right now. This is uh, some important information I needed to make sure get through. So this information I got from Pridewin. This is not me. I did not figure out how much they split, <laughs> how much the damage split on them were. But I got this from Pridewin. So in this is like in the rotations, how much damage you're going to be getting from uh, these things on screen. And obviously this video is going to be covering heavy and their heavy is going to be covering their skill and is going to be covering the liberation. So with that being said, uh, Gion is like literally only goddamn heavy attacking, uh, since we're not covering normal autos. You guys gotta remember, 66.9% of his damage comes from heavy attack. He does not have any liberation damage, so obviously, and there. As for Jinsi, it should come to no surprise that you're never really heavy attacking on her at all. Everything is happening in her, uh, incarnation state, so yeah. 75.8% of her damage is from her skill damage. Uh, that's no surprise. We know she's just absolutely nuking with that shit. And 7.5% of it is from her liberation. As for Kalcharo, 55.2% of his damage from liberation. And then 6.1% is from skills. Again, I'm not covering like every single stat <laughs> that they do. This is just what we're covering in this video just to see. We're covering their like basically their highest damaging stat, right? I'm not going to go through and worry about their echoes and all that. There's no point. This is what Gen C stat is going to look like. And I will say right now, you guys are going to see me use the same echo images as for the other tabs. As you can see, like for these guys, it's the same echoes. Obviously, I changed the name from like Spectro to Arrow and Void for the lightning one. I just didn't feel like going out of my way to get a absolute shit ton of images to just show these things. I, was, I wasn't even going to have them here because obviously we're, we've already shown them in the previous videos. But I wanted to leave it just in case people are curious on where these stats are coming from. As you can see, everything in white. Is going to be Gion's weapon on her. That's what the stats are going to be looking like with it. And everything in yellow is going to be her signature weapon. As you can see, the only thing that changes between these two weapons is the skill damage and the heavy attack damage. And as I've said before, she never heavies, so this shit is absolute goddamn useless. But even though she never uses it in a rotation, we don't live in a perfect world. People are going to be using the heavy attack every now and then regardless, so I decided to put it in this video regardless. This is what it's going to look like on Gian. Same concept. Yellow is his. White is the opposite weapon. You can see down here, instead of a crit, since it's a crit rate weapon, we uh, have the crit damage in white because we're going to be running the crit damage so we can get that one to two split to have a better ratio. And same old, same old. Uh, skill damage changes. Heavy attack damage changes. That is literally the only difference in these weapons. And so I know some people were confused on the calculations and stuff, wondering how I got certain, got to certain conclusions, what I would, the most important thing is to remember is that crit rate is worth double crit damage. It's double, double the worth of crit damage. So whatever your crit rate is, double it, and that's what your crit damage should be. So this weapon basically is the same as Gion's if we go by that concept, which is why the crit value or the crit ratio stays the same and the crit value stays the same. The only difference is that one is crit rate, so you gotta change the main stat echo to a crit damage to have it equal, and then one is crit damage to keep your main stat echo at a crit rate to keep it equal. That is the only thing that changes. Everything else, absolutely the same. For Kalcharo, we already know his best in slot right now is the Lustrous Razor, and we're looking at it right here. As you can see, Lustrous Razor, pack is high, crit value or crit ratio lower. As you can see right here, liberation goes up a little bit because the weapon does come with 21%. Now, in this video, uh, there's no real way to calculate how valuable the energy recharge is. But just know, whatever the percentage is for like the liberation damage, like just think of it as a tiny bit higher. There's just no real way to like put it on paper, right? But you you having energy recharge is going to allow you to get back to your rotation quicker and to make sure his ultimate is up. And obviously, there's a the comfort factor, right? You don't have to worry too, too much about it. It'll help you get your ultimate up quicker and 55% of his damage comes from his ultimate. So that energy recharge is not useless. There's just no way for me to calculate its value. And you can see, 
Uh, crit value is up on this weapon. Attack is lower. Obviously, the skill damage is going to come through a bit higher and everything else. is Heavy attack is going to be a little bit higher because of the 12% attribute. And then liberation is only going to be, I think, like 9% lower because it does get a 12%. From this as well same thing with the echoes i did not change the images i will say and obviously you're gonna have your the echo from your set this isn't the actual spectro set i just kept it here just to have the same images there you go you can see everything else now for gen c this is what we're gonna be looking like basically to explain it in short terms anything that takes a skill damage is getting 18 percent bonus which is like her main source of damage right as you can see her big boom the bomb it's an 18 percent 18.7 percent damage bonus from it which makes this weapon extremely valuable it's like basically like an 18.7 percent damage increase right because 75 basically 76 percent of her damage comes from skill damage uh, another 17% is from Liberation, as you can see down here, but because the weapons are identical in that sense, this Liberation damage does not change, and Gion has an 18.7% damage increase on heavy attacks, even though she should not be heavy attacking, we don't live in a perfect world, people are going to be doing it regardless, so yeah, if you have Gions, you're going to be doing a little bit more damage of that, this is what the damage numbers are going to be looking like, and I'll run you guys through how, to, how it works real quick, so you just get your motion value of the attack, run it through your attack damage, this is your crit value, since we're fighting an enemy on equal level, we're only going to be doing 50% damage to him. This is our damage multiplier right here. As you can see, it's a lot lower than this one because we don't have the extra 48% from skill. And since we're fighting an enemy, every enemy has 10% damage reduction. So we're going to be doing 0.9% more or 90% of our damage, basically. And obviously, as you can see over here, it's higher. It's 2.8. A lot higher. Reason? Because you have the bonus. So you're going to be doing a lot more damage. Very, very Ooh, you can see this is what numbers are going to be looking like again this isn't like a full rotation these are simply just i just simply went and grabbed her resonance skill with the stacks at 40 and just slapped it on screen did the conversion so you guys can see it this isn't like a full rotation this isn't what you're going to be seeing in your normal playthrough things will fluctuate things will change this is not set in stone this is just what happens okay now for Gian, no surprise. The thing with Gian is it's 18% is literally it has like almost infinite value on him. Because uh I know it says resonance liberation here, but this is still technically heavy attack because his resonance liberation only does heavy attack. It's not actual resonance liberation damage. As you can see on the right side here, I do give it damage multiplier, so he's gonna be doing a shit ton more, right? Because he does in fact. His ultimate does in fact only scale off Resonance Liberation, so he gets a lot more value. Now, if you look at a Resonance skill, you can see on over here, it does a little bit of damage. You get a little bit 18% increase. Obviously, he's not going to be... Like, I mean, he taps the skill every now and then, right? But, like, literally 66.9% of his damage comes from Heavy Attack. Now we're going to be taking a look at our boy Calcharo. As you can see on screen right now, his main weapon. This is what the damage are looking like. So, and uh, under normal heavy attacks, which you shouldn't be doing on Kalcharo, he never heavy attacks out of his liberation. And when he's in there, that death messenger gets counted as liberation damage. But, we do not live in a normal or perfect world. People are going to fuck up. So, I decided, so we're going to put it here regardless. And you can see there's a 5% damage increase with the. Uh, it's called weapon and the only reason for that is because it uh give it a crit value and stuff right the stats out of it as you can see i did mess up right here and i didn't change a crit value for this but this crit value should be 1.875 i forgot to change it but yeah it should be 1.875 i wanted to just make sure i pointed it out because i know somebody will catch my ass lacking on it so i decided you know what uh, let me point it out before somebody else does it for me i've just forgot to change it but the damage is correct i just simply forgot to change it my bad but yeah, as you can see, uh, anything that takes a skill, you're going to be seeing a 23% increase. And he does use his skill three times. And I did count that because to get the 21% liberation damage from Lustrous Razor, you have to tap his skill three times. So with that being said, you got to tap it to get the dam liberation damage bonus. I'm going to count it into the calculations because you got to tap it three times for this as well. Now, I know this 3% seems small as like a change from this weapon to his main one. But you got to remember, right? 55.5% of his damage does come from liberation. So this shit adds up like crazy, right? I just I did like a second one down here on the death method death messenger just to show you the difference. Like he's gonna be doing always gonna be doing more and 
55% of his damage comes from heavy. So if you're interested in like, if you have this weapon, you don't really need Jin C's. This weapon is overall better. And remember the energy recharge does help a shit ton with Dolcharo, right? Because you need to get his ultimate up to do proper damage. Now, that is pretty much going to be it for this video. I just wanted to simply just show I just wanted to like take basically these characters, their highest hitting numbers or what does the most in their kit. And I just simply just ran it through the different weapon just to show you how much value Jin C's weapon is going to have on your account. And as you can see, uh, Gian is probably not the best, but like if you're just planning on using this shit on Kalcharo, I'd say use that show up. Like there's no, <laughs> the damage difference between this and Lustrous Razor, you're chilling. But would you go out of your way to get this? Absolutely not. I still think Lustrous Razor is honestly a better weapon than this for Kalcharo because the energy recharge is very nice. Now, the problem is the crit ratio. You're going to have to work a lot harder to make your Kalcharo work. And his crit value is going to be really bad because obviously this weapon doesn't scale with crit. But you do get a shit ton of attacks so you can try and just play for your crit rolls. You're just going to need to make sure you have those better crit rolls for it to work. It's going to be a little bit harder. So as I said for Kalcharo, if you have a Jinsi's weapon, you can use it. If not, I wouldn't recommend rolling for it for Kalcharo. Same with Jian. If you have Verdant Summon on Jian, yeah, that weapon is absolutely, I mean, it's just tailor made for him. It's fucking disgusting. Like 66.9% of his damage comes from that. And then he's just permanently just in his ult. Yeah, I think he's good with his weapon. Uh, if you have Gen C's, obviously, if you don't have Verdant Summon and you want Gen C's, as you can see on screen right now, you can decide for yourself if you do want that. This would be your choice. So with that being said, that's pretty much going to be the end of this video. I just wanted to just walk you guys through this real quick. I wanted to drop this video for you all because somebody was asking about it. So I decided I'd make a video on it. With that all being said, if you guys like the video, like the video, comment, subscribe, and join the Discord if you want to get in touch with me. And I'll catch you all in the next one, boys. Peace out.